Lord, everybody. I said praise the Lord, everybody. A little bit volume. Just a little bit. Amen. Come on, give God a little. Come on, just give God some praise. Amen. How many know he's worthy? Oh, y'all don't, I don't believe y'all. Show it. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> oh, yes, he's worthy. Father, we thank you tonight. Bless us. Speak to us tonight, God. Out of your word, God, strengthen us. Don't let us leave the way we came. We bind Satan right now. Every satanic demon spirit that comes to try to rob this word. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you right now. And we give you the praise, God. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Come on, give God a thunderous praise. Amen. You may take your seat if you choose to. Amen. Thank God, amen, for being here tonight. Oh, we had a time on Sunday. Lord met us here on Sunday morning. Thank God for that word, walking worthy of my vocation. Walking in a way that's pleasing to God. Amen. We thank God for our first lady. Amen. Wyndham. Amen. We thank God for our minister, Geisha. Thank God for minister, Casey. Amen. Man of God, be healed and delivered. We thank God for it. Thank God for Sister Linda. Amen. Intercessor. Thank God for all y'all. Thank God for the whole body of Christ. Amen. We thank God for you. May have you take your seat if you choose to. We thank God. Amen. For this lovely Tuesday evening. Amen. I thank God for it. I, I tell you, God is worthy to be praised. And I tell you, I, I, I have an appetite for church. You know, they say when you lose your appetite, you get sick. If you lose an appetite for church, your spirit is getting sick. Amen. But why, I cannot wait to get to church on Tuesdays, Fridays, Sunday. One day I'm going to have a seven-day service straight. It's straight seven days. I mean, knock you out, drag you out. You're going to have more energy than you think when you go back to work. Come on. I mean one of the most sanctified seven-day churches. Hallelujah. And I bless his holy name. And I give God the praise. The, the song says he's a wonder in my soul. But it ain't no wonder to me. I don't know how he do what he do, but I ain't no wonder. I know who it is. Come on, somebody. And the song says I searched all over, couldn't find them. Listen. I, my search was over when I found it. Or when he found me, the search was over. And I can't look for him and nobody else. You know, the scripture said God is in heaven. So why am I looking down here? Trying to search. I, my search is over. Come on, somebody here. It's over. Amen. And I thank God today, amen, for his word. I thank God for his power. I thank God for the resurrection of the dead. Oh, it's going to happen one day. Amen. The dead in Christ shall rise. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Oh, because we're getting off this ground. All this trouble down here. I'm leaving this one. Come on. I'm getting about here. How many going to get up? I'm going to get up. Psalms chapter 55. Psalms chapter 55. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. I can feel some of y'all tired in your bodies. I can sense it. But get in the spirit. You know, something about these Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It's kind of like in the middle of the week. But when you shift in the spirit, you'll be all right. Come on now. I can feel your, 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 your spirit is alert, but your body is tired. But don't let your body rule your spirit. Come on, don't let it happen. Remember, you be the sacrifice. And if you the sacrifice, he will light it. He will light the fire. 
Come on, you just give yourself to God. Lord, I, I'm coming tired, but I'm going to give it to you. Boy, you'll find yourself the main, the tiredest one be the mainest one shouting. <laughs> Boy, you the heaviest one tired, but I tell you, when the fire light you, we have to set you down and fan you. <laughs> Don't fan them. We have to fan them. The more we fan, the more that blaze get out. You be the main one. If you just learn how to just give yourself to God when you come to church. Come on, God, here I am. Listen, I'm coming to you as I am. I'm tired. I'm worn. But I'm giving you me. Boy, I bet that fire lights you up. Y'all, come on, somebody. <laughs> A lot of saints don't know how to catch on fire no more. They don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't know how to allow the Lord to catch them on fire because their wood already wet. You can't, you, you, can't be let, you can't let stuff just dry you up. Come on, y'all quiet. Come on here. I don't know what about y'all. I'm tired of sparks. Give me a blaze. Don't just spark me on Sunday and I'm back dry again on Tuesday. Now, come on. Give me something, God, that's going to that's gonna keep me on fire. Ah, God have mercy. Don't, don't, don't give me no jumper cable. Lay your hand on me, then I feel it. Uh, 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 uh. Now listen, I, I gotta have that thing burning every time. Y'all, y'all, come on. He said the fire shall continually be burning. Don't put this stuff. I'm human. I can't always. No, wait a minute. Even in the midst of your trial, even Jeremiah said, "I wasn't gonna preach no more. I'm not gonna make mention of your name no more." But the more he tried to hold his peace, the more the fire kept burning. Y'all, come on. That fire shouldn't die out. It shouldn't die out. What are you putting in your fire on a in your uh in your fireplace spiritually through the week? You gotta put this word in your heart. Come on, somebody can't wait to Tuesday night to get a feeding. Lord have mercy. I want that Acts one and eight that you got on that shirt. Acts one and eight. For you shall receive power. After that, after that, after that, after that, after an event, after that, the Holy Ghost comes, falls, dwells upon you. Ha! See, there you go. He's shifting that thing. I can see you. So you got to know how to shift that. Sh Lord, be that sacrifice. Lord, I need that power to come upon me tonight. Come on, somebody here. Time to get cold in the spirit. Shake yourself loose. I'm looking at the spirit. Some of y'all stiff as a board. In the realm of the spirit, you stiff as a board. Come on now. All this fire you got in your belly? Y'all better hear me tonight. Yes, God. Psalms 55. Hallelujah. Some of y'all got some fire burning. And look, look. You, you can't give nobody none of your fire. Because you might not have enough left for you. You might better keep what you got. Because you can't keep pointing out on folks that don't want this. You got to keep your own fire. Come on. You got to. Shut down. Go, Bubba. Yeah. Glory. Y'all don't, don't have to touch nobody to, to give them a charge. No. Yes, your fire. Come on, somebody might not be enough left for you after the service is over. I got to keep my lamps burning, first lady. The bridegroom is coming. I can't, I, I can't let them catch me dry and dead. There's a bridegroom coming. Y'all better light yourself up in here now. Come on here. Let me now, not you. Put yourself as a sacrifice. Put yourself in position for the fire of God to fall. Yes, Lord. Ooh, oh, come on. We're always waiting for something to happen. You know what? You got to be the one that's happening. You got to make Y'all, come on. We wait for God this fall. But God said, what am I going to fall on? You're not giving me anything to fall on. 
You're not giving me anything to work with. What are we giving them to work with? Got to give them something. I'm going to get this word to you. Psalm 55. Let's go. Psalms 55. I got to talk to you a little bit. Then maybe we'll shout later. Maybe. I don't know. But I got to give you some word. Hallelujah. This is my telling them. Go to sleep on Pastor now. No, tell them no, no, reverse. Don't go to sleep on God. I'll tell you, boy, church should never be boring. It should never, it should never be a bored, a bored time in church. It should never be a bored time in church. It just got to be open. Hear what the Lord is saying to the church. Psalms 55, verse 16 down to 18, when you get it, say amen. David said, as for me, I will call upon God. And the Lord shall what? He shall what? It didn't say probably. It didn't say maybe. It didn't say if. You meet the conditions. No, I'm telling you, if you meet the conditions, the promise will be fulfilled. If I call, he shall. Save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear. There you go again, another shout. He shall hear my voice. First he shall save me, then he shall deliver me, or he shall hear my voice. In verse 18, he had delivered my soul in peace from the battle from the battle that was against me. past tense. He shall deliver me from the battle that was against me for there were many with me. My thought tonight is very simple. It's entitled the battle is won through prayer. How many believe the battle the battle is one through prayer. See, I, I didn't get too many participants. Because some folks don't understand the value of prayer. Because if you pray, something about what I said will spark an agreement in your spirit. Y'all, come on. And it set an excitement in your flesh. But it should spark an agreement in your spirit. Because the way that I know you have a prayer life is when prayer is mentioned, it moves you. Oh, you, you, you are alive when prayer is spoken. Because you are active in it. Now, I don't know about them. I don't know about y'all. But the battle is won for me through prayer. The battle is won. The battle. Shadow. Some of y'all ain't getting it. Y'all been looking for an answer. What do I do and how? God said the battle is won. See, David, David went in his troubles before God evening, morning, and midday in solemn, earnest prayer. In another place in Psalms 119 and 164, the Bible said he went before God seven times a day. He was before God at one point 
seven times a day. And the Bible said he engaged in acts of devotion. And, and see, when, when you're going through some battles against your soul, you got to know how to engage in prayer. And I hear the Lord saying, it's going to take some time more than one time a day. Depending upon the battle. Y'all come on somebody. Sometimes it's going to take more than one time a day. David is a good example on how God delivered through prayer. Oh, are y'all with me here? Look at real quick Psalms 141 and 12. This is the evening prayer. Psalms 141 and 12. Y'all hold on. We got a word. I got a word for you. Psalms 141 and 12. This is evening prayer. I think I wrote the wrong one down. That's okay. I'm going to come back to it. I think I wrote the wrong one down. That's all right. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's all right. I got some more. Psalms 119 and 62. Psalms 119 and 62. How bad are you? How bad do you want God to bring you out? How bad do you want God to deliver you? Psalms 119 and 62 says, At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. Look at Psalms 88 and 13. This is morning. Psalms 88 and 13 says, But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee or come before you. Brothers and sisters, how much value do we put on prayer? How valuable is prayer to you? Because when prayer is valuable, you will sacrifice your time of sleep. Oh, y'all quiet. You will sacrifice time away from the family. You will sacrifice time away from food. Because there's a battle going on in your soul. And the reason why a lot of people is not winning the battle that is coming up against their soul. Because they don't have a prayer life. And see we get the word prayer life and prayer time mixed up. I spent time in prayer today, but it's not a life if you don't do it every day. Oh, come on. I prayed today, but you missed yesterday. You missed the day before. And, and so you spent some time in prayer, but has it become a life of prayer? Because when you are tired of this enemy coming up against your soul, the way he's coming up against your soul, nobody is going to have to tell you to pray. Oh, yes, Lord. See, I, I can feel it. I'm, I, I got to go over some humps in here because everybody don't pray, Sister Linda. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. We want God to deliver us. We want God to bless us. We want God to break habits in us. But we don't want to spend no time on our knees and prayer every day. We want the preacher to lay hands on us. We want the preacher to counsel us every day. But we don't want to spend no time in prayer. But David said, I saw God three times in the day. Amen. To deliver me from what I'm going through. And the Bible said God hurt. No, y'all better hear me now. God heard him. My God, I'm mercy. Lord, do I got to go here tonight? I feel you, Lord. Let me tell you why folks ain't really praying, Sister Linda. Because of S-I-N. Sin to keep you away from prayer. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. The Bible, David said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. The Lord just gave me a revelation. Not only will God not hear you when you pray, if you got sin in your heart, God won't hear you because you won't pray. My God, we you got sin in your heart. 
Did y'all just get what I said? I'm going to say it again. Listen, God ain't going to hear nothing you got to say if you're cherishing sin in your heart. And if you got sin in your heart, you won't pray, therefore he won't hear you. Prayer will keep you away from sin. will keep you away from prayer. Boy, y'all quiet on me. It'll keep you away from really getting before the face of God because there's something inside of you that the enemy is using to wage war against your soul. But I come to tell somebody tonight, it's time to engage in some battle in prayer. You did it with something you can't handle. It's time to pray. How bad did you want it? David said he prayed seven times a day. One verse we just read three times a day. And he did it over and over and over until God delivered him. Yo, let me tell you. Boy, I tell you, let me tell you something. Getting all prayed over ain't good enough. Y'all come on, somebody pray with his all. Wait a minute, but God said, listen, I, he can pray with the all. But how's your prayer life? When the last time you got down on your face and you sought the Lord until he heard you. When the, y'all come on, somebody here. But the problem is, we got too much sin. I hear the Lord said clutter. It's too much clutter in our spirits. And the enemy is using that clutter to keep you out your prayer closet. Yes, Lord, take your Holy Ghost. Because his eyes is too pretty to look up on anything evil. Oh, but when you come before God, you got to come to him with a clean heart. You got to tell the Lord, look here. I'm tired of this battle I'm in. And I know you're the only one that can deliver me from this battle. Well, the battle is won. Y'all don't believe that. The battle is won in prayer. I said the battle is won in prayer. And I hear the Lord said, the more you neglect prayer, the more drier you're going to become. It don't matter, Sister Linda, if we get up in here and try to cheerlead the people and try to get them to pray rally and to get them to move. If they have not been praying, they are dry as this pulpit that's standing in front of me. And the only thing that's moving is their flesh and not their spirit. Because prayer have a way of moving your spirit. Prayer have a way of igniting your spirit. Prayer have a way of loosening you up to get you ready for the battle. Huh? Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Huh? Yes, it is. Huh? It will massage your spirit. Huh? It will loosen the muscles up for you to get back out there to fight. Well, I can't, I can't hear nobody here. Huh? Oh, God, because see, some of us understand huh? that this is a battle coming against me. Huh? A battle of sickness. Huh? A battle of mind problems. Huh? A battle of sin against some people. Huh? A battle of addictions. Huh? A battle of habits huh? that Satan is using. Huh? And some folks don't have enough sense to know. Huh? I gotta get before God. Huh? I gotta get myself cleansed huh? so I can get in a place. Huh? Well, God can fight huh? my battle. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, I know. I know that the battle is won in prayer. I know. See, I learned something. When you are in a battle, you cannot let up off a of plan because you see some results. You got to lay on it until it's over with. I'm not praying because it looked better. I'm not going to stop praying because it seems better. I'm going to stop praying when it's over. I can't hear nobody. You can't, Lord, have mercy. I don't got the sentence no more, but I still. Listen, I'm going to pray until it's over with. And when it's over with, I got no need to pray about this no more. He brought deliverance. My God. And somebody got to try Jesus. You got to get in your prayer closet and pray until God heal your body. Now hear God saying, what you waiting on? What you waiting on? Why are you waiting for something to happen on the outside? When you got a closet that you can buy your knee on and Cry out to me huh, until I deliver. Huh. Ah, God said, huh, you will never know success huh, until you win the battle in prayer. You'll never see deliverance until you learn how to war in prayer.
Because you can tell who prays. Because people that praise is lighter. Their spirits are lighter. Shandle. Why? Because prayer in prayer you take burdens to God and you release them off you. Because if I'm carrying heavy weights all the time, it's going to be too heavy and I'm burdened down with it. But see, a person that prays always exchange. They, are, they might be going through. They, things might not be going right. But there's a lightness on their spirit. Because they keep exchanging. Uh, his freedom from their burden. His lightness from their heaven. There's always an exchange. Why am I so heavy? Why am I so heavy? Because you don't pray. You have prayer time. But you don't have a prayer life. Boy, boy, listen, I can't shock, I can't keep shocking nobody on pray. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came down on people that was praying. They wasn't just sitting up there playing with their fingers. They was up there praying and waiting and tapping for the Holy Ghost. How's your prayer life? Because if you don't have one, I don't have to look too far of why you're not spiritual, why you're heavy all the time. David said, I was desperate. He said, as for me, I call upon God and the Lord shall save me. He said, three times a day, I will pray and cry loud and he shall hear my voice. See, let me tell you something. When you are winning in prayer, Sister Linda, you're not going in guessing if God hears you. You know, when you see, when you go and pray, you know he hear me. I know, watch this. I love shopping. I love shopping. I don't have to wait till the battle is over to win it. As long as I'm praying, I'm winning. When I'm not praying, I'm losing. Y'all better hear me. To know that he's hearing me. It's letting me know I got power on my side. I got a God on my side. And after a while, this thing gonna be over. I'm winning the battle when I consecrate in a prayer life. When you soak yourself in prayer. Because see, this is an hour where you got to be very careful because the devil will try to put a, a heaviness where you don't feel like praying. He'll try to trick you up with, with issues and, and situations where he'll make you mishandle prayer. I, I mishandled it the other day. I said, wait a minute. I said, I can't let this happen no more. I, I allowed myself to make me mishandle the time I had set for prayer. Dealing with natural stuff. And the Holy Ghost rebuked me. You got to be in position of winning. Y'all come on. In a position of winning that is on my knees. Every time I hit my knees, I am winning. Why? Not because my knees hit the floor. It's because he hear me. How can I be so confident that he hear me? Because I don't cherish no sin. The word regard, he said, if I, re if I regard iniquity, that word regard means cherish, love sin. You love a habit. It's giving you pleasure. God said, no. He said, before you come before me with that, you got to let me wash you. You got to come before with, with me with repentance. You, 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 you got to have a soft heart first. You can't come to me with a heart. I thank you for this. You, you can't come in prayer with a mind saying, I know I'm going to be, I'm continue doing this when I come out of here. I'm just going to pray. I know my mind ain't made up to change. I'm uh, Listen, I know I got that battle. I know it ain't over with yet. Listen, you just defeated yourself. You got to go in prayer with a mindset that when I come out of this, I'm not coming out the way that I came in. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. You got to come with a heart of knowing when I hear when I get before God. My life is going to change this hour, these two hours, these three hours. Listen, something is going to change for me. You can't go and pray expecting to be the same way when you come out. That means God didn't hear you. And see, ha having, a, having a connection with God 
is the most vital thing that you can have in such a crucial hour that we're living in. Y'all better hear me. You better have a prayer life in this hour. We are living in an hour of master deception. And if you don't have a prayer life, I'm going to ask you a question. How is God directing your steps and you don't pray? That's why some folks don't know what to do. You don't know which way to go. You don't know which, which road to take. He said, lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge me. That means pray. That means keep going to God. And I promise you, after a while, he'll direct your paths. But the reason why we confused and in the valley of decision is because we got prayer time, but we don't have a prayer life. And in an hour like this, you better have a prayer life. And it, it came to my spirit, Sister Linda, when Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, it shall be given to you. But the Holy Ghost spoke a word to me. He said, anybody can't just claim that. He said, only people that can claim, this is what he told me. The only people that can claim that scripture is ones that's special to me. Those that got a closeness to me. Y'all come on. You, you got, it's, a, it's, a, it's a certain place in God you got to be in. For you to ask anything in his name and it's done. Y'all come on somebody here. Those kind of people are the people that war in prayer. Because we think asking me one time. He said, ask anything in my name. Ask anything in my name. See, some, well, I thank you. Thank you for this revelation. Watch this. Ask anything in my name. Because sometimes it takes me repeating the prayer over and over. Because the first time, I just don't know how to say it right. And the second time, I, I don't think I'm related right. So I got to keep going back until my spirit witness. Oh, now you got the connection now. See, we, we got to pray until we feel the connection. You got to pray until you know your door. Till you know your door. Till you know your door is an answer. See, folks that have prayer time just pray without uh, conviction. But those that have a prayer life, you pray until you get that. I just feel it's done. Yeah, uh, so, so you getting this, brother? You getting this? You got to, when you're praying for something, you have to war in prayer until God release you and say it's done. That's what you call consistent warring in prayer. The Lord said the reason why a lot of folks don't get what they ask because they didn't give me time to confirm it. The answer in the spirit. David said, I pray three times a day. I, I pray three times a day. I cried aloud. And he sure hear. He said, Listen, I, I have to keep praying until I know he heard me. When the last time you prayed through? Until you just got a release in your shadow. You just got that release. Oh. Because see, the first four, 40 times, I might not have been praying it right. Part of the 41st time, last 41st, I made that connection. Oh, God. And, and see, I thank you, Lord. Because battling, battling in prayer is not for lazy folk. It's on folks that got patience to endure until you get that answer. Until there's a, there's a part in your spirit where you know, I know God heard me now. Because <sighs> see, there's times you get in prayer, you ain't feeling God. You ain't hearing him. But God said, I'm testing you. I want to see how bad you want this. You ain't felt no endowment. You ain't no tongue sparked out. 
your belly. He said, I want you to pray until you know I hear you. Because if you're praying and you don't feel me, and you think it, I don't hear you. I'm going to say this again. If you're praying because you don't feel me, you think I'm not hearing you, you're praying in doubt. I guess God didn't hear me on that doubt. Go back. I didn't feel no, no, no tongue come out. I didn't feel no, no, no water come out. God said, no, go back. Because you got to know before I give you the conviction that it's done, you got to know that I'm hearing you. You got to know without any kind of proof. I'm going to keep coming back. Amen. Father, this is the issue. Come on, man of God. This is a problem. Come on, if I got to pray three times a day, on, I'm going to keep going yes. until I get that release. Until I get that. Y'all don't hear me. Some of y'all don't want this tonight. Cause some of y'all ain't ready for this. Cause Cause some of y'all don't have a prayer life. You got prayer time, <laughs> but 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 you don't have a, a a prayer life. Prayer time, but not a prayer time, but not a prayer life. Prayer time, but not a prayer life. Prayer time. Jesus said, "Whatever you ask in my name, believe that you receive." You should have what you ask. Yes. Believe that you already received it. Right. Then you should have right. what you ask. Right. Believe. See, see, let me tell you something about this believing. Yes, you come with your beliefs that God has done it. But when God put an assurance in you, it passed your belief. <laughs> belief turns into assurance. See, I'm keeping the faith until it happens. But when you got assurance, what's the use of keep trying to use faith? It's just done. Can I give you an example? I don't have to have faith that my hand is here. I'm just assured. Yeah, you get it. It's, it's just, I don't have to muster up no faith. Lord, please let my hand be there. No, I just know it. It supersedes just faith alone. It's just in your knower. And when you pray to the point where your answer has come in your Noah, boy, have mercy, you just won. The battle is over. You're going to see some manifestation. You're about to see some result. Y'all come on, some. Oh, God, have mercy. That's why you answered that prayer, because you prayed through. And I'm telling y'all that don't have a prayer life in this hour. Don't look no farther to why God's not blessing you. Don't look no farther to why you're not being delivered. Don't look no farther to why God ain't breaking through for you. Because you're not coming and warring in prayer. All my battles is won in prayer. If there's any failure in me, it's because I failed to pray. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Y'all come on. If there's any failure, it's because I failed to pray. I'm not going to embarrass nobody, but I just kind of wonder. Uh, don't raise your hand. If I was to do a show of hands in here, who all got a prayer life? I wonder how many will raise their hands. No, 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 don't do it. Because the ones whose hand is still like this, those are the hands that's hard to wave when the, when the power come down. Those are the ones who have to jump when the spirit say move. Because you don't have a prayer life. Lord have mercy. I was reading today. Y'all let me take my time for a second. He said, let us, let us give the most earnest heed to the things that we have heard less than time we let them slip. Now I'm teaching you something that's going to give you victory. You know what the Holy Ghost told me? Stop counseling with people over the things you already told them. Y'all quiet on me. 
I'm talking about stuff that's being taught like this. I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to go. Y'all don't have to like me. I don't really care. I'm coaching you now. But the problem is, when you don't have a prayer life, you don't give the Holy Ghost opportunity to bring back to remembrance what was spoke to you behind the pulpit. Y'all have to like me. He said he'll show you all things. Why do we get to this place where I don't know what to do? And you've been taught. Well, I can't get no, I can't get no help. The Holy Ghost will bring some stuff back to you that was preached. Oh, I remember what Pastor preached that. That's what I'm gonna do. That's and I understand saints is not as equipped as the pastor. There's certain things you won't know. That the pastor know certain instructions you can't get unless the pastor give to you. But on stuff like what do I do to restore my fire, I ain't gonna sit there and talk to you about that. It's wasting my time. I already told you. Y'all quiet on me. I can't get. What, what do I do to get my to get the power of God start moving in me again? I, I, how many times have I? I ain't gonna sit down with you and talk to you about that. Now, if you're asking me a question about what you feel, what, Pastor, can you discern what's wrong in my spirit? I, I'm just not, you know, I, I don't feel like I used to feel. Something ain't right, Pastor, can you help? I help you with that. But don't come to me asking me how I get this stuff moving again. Y'all don't have to like me. What do I do to get my shout back? I can't sit down and talk to you about that. I preached it to y'all already. Y'all have to like me. But I... But there's questions about issues you can't handle. There's, there's some, some strongholds on me, Pastor. I, I need some help. Okay, that's different. But to get my fire back? I'm telling you what to do. The battle is won in prayer. Y'all don't have to like me. They don't have to like me, Sister Little. The battle... It's one in prayer. And I feel bad for saints that don't have a prayer life in this hour. Because if we ever needed the Lord, we need him right now. If you ever, Lord, if you ever had a prayer life, you need one right now. Why city we here till we die? Somebody got to tonight make a decision. I got to get some more prayer. I got to lay on my face and pray until an answer come. I cannot continue to let this battle in my soul defeat me like it's doing. There's some people got a battle going on in the soul. You can't seem to get the victory over some stuff. But you can't win just crying about it. You got to get down on the knees. Spend some time with God. Spend some hours with him. Boy, see, we don't want to go to the hours levels. That's a lot of time. How desperate do you need it? Oh, jeez. How bad do you want it? He has a spiritual battle against our souls happening as I speak. And therefore, this is absolutely the wrong time to be a prideless saint. Boy, I tell you, Lord, a, a prideless saint is a saint that's losing the battle. What battle? It's a spiritual battle going on. That's why folks is yielding to all this temptation. Can't get victory from Sunday to the next Sunday because they skip it. There's so many gaps of prayer in their lives. Just gaps of space. Days by go by. Oh God, what? 
I ain't just talking about prayer time. I'm talking about prayer life. Days go by with the life of prayer sucked out of them. And they wonder why spirits of witchcraft got such of a stronghold on them. You know why witchcraft got such of a stronghold on you? Because that spirit of witchcraft is stronger than your spirit. Because when you spend time in prayer, your spirit gets stronger. Boy, y'all, come on. There's nothing can grip you when you are full in prayer. Your spirit gets strengthened. Your mind get clearer. And so for many folks, it's bound by these Jezebel spirits and bound by the Lalas. Because you don't have a prayer life. Because a man or woman of God, they got a prayer life. Jezebel's your enemy. There's no common ground. You cause confusion when you got a problem. Y'all better. Woo. Ah, God, that, 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 that Jezebel wants to kill the prophets. And when you don't got a prayer life, that spirit is killing your anointing. It's killing your gifts. You're losing the battle, man of God. Woman of God, you're losing the battle when you don't pray. Why your head always hurting? I always feel it's not in my stomach. I always feel heaviness when I walk in the house. I always feel bound. I can't think good because you ain't praying. You're not, you're not pulling out no principalities. That's up in your house. I can't hear nobody. As long as you don't pray, the more they're going to stay around your house. The more they're going to take control of your mind. I can't hear nobody here. Yeah, you better learn how to get before God and hide in prayer and come out with some power. God have mercy. Your battle is won in prayer. You got to have a prayer life. And a lot of people know that they need God. They know they need God to deliver them. But they don't have enough desperation for God to deliver them. See, it's one thing knowing you need it. But it's another thing having a desperation. That Lord, I need you to deliver me. Because see, when you are desperate for God to deliver you from a battle that is raging war against your soul, you, you, you will show God how bad you want deliverance through how much you are praying for him to rescue you. Now, see, God said, listen, you will see how bad God said, I will see how bad you want it based off of the measure of prayer that you have given to me concerning this situation. How bad you really want it? Well, you have prayer time? Instead of that time to come alive? Boy, come on. Because when you have a prayer life, you ain't bound by stuff. First lady, it's quiet on me. When you have a prayer life, stuff don't grip you that easy. That's why you're so emotional, because you don't pray. Boy, it's quiet on me. Testing one, two, three. That's why you're so aggravated and agitated. Because you don't have a prayer life. That's why you're still jealous. They got envy. Still strifeful and debateful. Because you don't have a prayer life. I hear the Lord say, if you spend that kind of energy fussing and fighting in prayer, you use that kind of energy in prayer. I promise you things will start changing. Stuff will start turning around. Because see, when, when you pray, you tap when you really pray. When you tap into the realm of the spirit, you're tapping it into God. And everything you need is in the realm of the, realm of the spirit. The house is in the spirit. The rent money is in the spirit. The cardinal money is in the spirit. Y'all can't get no. And if you never tap the realm of the spirit, you cannot pull out of the spirit. What's in it for you? Got a lot of wrestle till you get it. Wrestle like Jacob. I can't stop wrestling until you bless me. Your kids ain't gonna be saved till you wrestle in prayer. 
You got to keep going and keep praying and keep praying. Just because it looked better, you ain't going to stop praying. You ain't going to stop until you got the assurance that God heard me. They walk through this door and get delivered. Can I get somebody here? Y'all better lift your hands and give God some praise up in there. How bad do you really want this thing? How bad do you really want God to turn this thing around? How bad do you really want God to give you an answer? Let me tell you, it ain't bad enough just coming through the prayer line. You ain't desperate enough just give him how y'all cried on me here. Just coming and let me touch you, dog. It's got to be deeper than that, baby. After you get this prayer, you got to go home and say, God, I ain't letting you go until you bless me. It can be a week. It can be two weeks. It can be three months. But as long as I'm praying, I'm winning the battle. As long as I'm fasting and seeking your face, I'm winning the battle. Cause when I'm praying, I can't be out sinning. When I'm praying, I'm not doing evil. So you take a break from evil when you pray. I can't hear nobody. You take a break from yourself. Because you're spending that time in prayer. Oh, when I come out this prayer closet, I'm coming out a new man. Can I get a witness in here? I'm coming shot shot. Glory, hallelujah. You know what's scary to me, first lady? People that was once close to God. They had a connection with them. Looked like they lost. Because they stopped praying. Ask yourself, who came in my life? What came in my life? To keep me or prevent me from warring in prayer. Oh, don't have to hear me. What's going on in my life where I'm not praying like I used to? Who oh, is quiet on me tonight? Boy, I bet you if everybody here had a prayer life, boy, this church be turned upside down. It won't be no struggle in the word. It won't be no bumps here and light over here and heavy. Now, boy, it'll be so light in this house, too, boy, we'll turn this church upside down. Oh, my God. God have mercy. I come to ask y'all tonight. What I'm taking you out your prayer closet. What I'm taking you out that place with God that you used to have with him. Where it was you and him. My God. What happened to that place where you still enjoyed spending time in the presence of the Lord. What got your heart now? What got a hold of your heart? What what's got what what got a hold of your heart? And the Lord said to me, just wanting God to deliver you from the battle. That is, that is against you ain't enough. You have to pray until the battle is over. And the Lord said the missing ingredient in a lot of our battles is prayer. Lord have mercy. You're going through a lot of stuff and you're going, you're trying to handle this stuff on your own. And God said the missing ingredient is prayer. It's got to be a level where you tell some stuff over to God. You got to tell the Lord, look, it's out of my hands. I got to give this thing to you. I'm broken. I'm tired of the way I'm going. I got to give this thing to you. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. God, I got to go in my prayer closet. I got to make an exit. I feel my help coming on now. I got to go in my prayer closet. I got to make an exchange. Because this thing about to kill me. It's about to take me out. Here I am. Make an exchange. The devil trying to dry me up. He's trying to take my praise, God. He's trying to take my worship. He's trying to take my shout. He's trying to take my dance. And God is saying, what you going to do about it? Are you going to sit down and learn about it? Or are you going to go and pray and fight for it? You're going to fight for the anointing again. You're going to fight for that praise again. you got to fight in prayer. I can't get nobody here. 
I can't get nobody here now. You, you can't afford my God. You, 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 you got to involve God in the battle that's against you. Oh my God, by praying. If you don't pray, you can't get God involved. If you don't pray, God can't do nothing for you. Can I get a witness? David said, look here. I stopped feeling sorry for myself. I got myself up. And I went before God three times a day. And when I went before God three times a day, he heard my prayer. He heard my voice. Y'all better hear what I'm saying in here. Oh, God and mercy. I got to pray, Brother Robert. Until I know he heard my voice. I got to pray, hallelujah. Until I know the answer's already done. I, I got to pray. Until I feel it anointed. Back on my life again. I got to pray. Until I feel that fire again. Y'all better hear me. I'm not going to be satisfied. Until you bless me, God. In this situation, it's not any way you bless me. Well, I need this blessing. I need this anointing again. I need God to break some bands from off my neck. I need God to break some burdens from off my shoulder. I got a wall. Yes, Lord, have mercy. Because the prayer muscle, I hear the Lord say, is some people's prayer muscles. It's just too weak. You're just too weak in prayer. You give up at the first sign of trouble. You give up the first time you feel God ain't here. You give up the first time when it looked contrary. When God, you ask God to do this for you. But the thing you ask for look like it ain't going to happen. But I hear God saying tonight, I got a wall, Brother Trey. I got a wall for this anointing. I got a wall, hallelujah. My God, I'm mercy. I got a wall, hallelujah, for my family. I got a wall for my church. I got a wall until my blood pressure go down. I got a wall. The sugar that I beat is gone. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. I, I, I got a wall. The cancer's dried up. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Somebody gotta go back and pray. Somebody gotta pray a tear. God, here's your voice. You got to pray to God, get that dryness off you. That's a battle in your soul. He's warned against that anointing. And as long as you don't spend no quality time in prayer, you're going to keep being dry. Y'all better, oh, and not this dry, but heavy. Lord have mercy. But the first thing you got to do is get that sin out your life. Y'all better feel what I'm saying. Get them secrets out your life. Get them dark areas out your life. And ask the Lord to deliver me and repent of your sins. And then come on in prayer. There's some folks, Sister Linda. God said they ain't repented. God said there's some folks that have not surrendered everything to God. That's why they can't fight. Because they ain't surrendered. I can't hear nobody here. That's why I feel the Holy Ghost. That's why you got no connection. Because you won't repent. That's why. You're heavy, you're dry, but you won't repent. But I, 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 I hear God saying tonight, I win my battles up in prayer. I gotta get down on my knees. I gotta pray. Look at Because if I had some real prayer warriors in here, it won't take that long to spark this fire. It won't take that long for the power of God to move 
up in the church. Well, I hear God say in the night, he said, because they don't have a prayer life, he said, they're quenching my spirit. The fire is put out because you got no prayer life. Y'all better hear me this. That's why you don't feel the flames of fire down in your belly because you don't have a prayer life. That's why you can't feel the others feel in the house of God because you don't have a prayer life. That's why you got no joy because you ain't got no prayer life. I heard if I cry to Jesus, he will have some prayer. Can I get a witness in here? I'm trying to find out what my prayer is at. I'm trying to find out what my intercession is at. I'm trying to find out who was praying. Yes, the Lord Jesus. Yes, the Lord can hear me. Yes, the Lord. This, uh, excuse me, this, uh, it's two of the night. But I hear God saying for his living. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, I'm looking through the building. And I'm trying to find out who can I light with fire. I'm trying to find out where's the sacrifice at. Yes, I am. I'm trying to find out who got some power on them. Well, I can light them up. God said tonight, I'm trying to find out who made a sacrifice for me to light them up. Can I get somebody with your satire? He said, Look at my satire. Look at us. Well, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. It don't take God alone to send the fire down. It don't take God alone to let that fire burn in your belly. When my fire is put out, it means my wood is wet. It means I have not been in the place, in the place of prayer. But I come to tell somebody, you'll never get it back. You'll never get it back by not praying. You'll never get it back by complaining. You'll never get it back by sitting down like a bump on the log. But you'll get that fire. You'll get it back when you make yourself a sacrifice as you want in prayer. I'm trying to look across, look across the building. I'm trying to find out. What my sacrifice is at? I trying to find out what the fire is doing. Y'all better hear me. I heard from my shit. It's like fire. It's like fire. It's like fire. Shut up in my boat. Yes, it is. I come to ask you, where's your fire at? Because when I'm on fire, I can't stand still. When I'm on fire, I can't keep quiet. When I'm on fire, something's going to affect me. The flame is hot. The heat going to burn me. When I'm on fire, y'all better hear me. Why your fire? What I understand now, I'm not preaching to everybody. Cause I ain't got the fire to light you up with. I can't accept for more shit. But I come to tell you tonight, if you don't feel no power, if you don't feel no anointing, you're dry, baby. And you need to go back in to your prayer closet. If this anointing don't spark no fire, you need to go back into your prayer closet. If all you got is emotion, you need to go back to your prayer closet. Y'all better hear it. 
there was a time when you praise God. There was a time when you gave him glory. There was a time when the fire fell on you. Ask yourself, what happened to the fire? What happened to the anointing? I can tell you what has happened. You stop worrying in prayer. You stop worrying on your knees. I come to tell you, I gotta get back. You gotta get back on your face and say, Lord, light me again. Lord, light me again. Lord, fill me one more time. Lord, bring back that anointing I used to have. Lord, I'm not gonna let you go until you bless me. I'm not gonna get up until you bless me. I'm not gonna stop worrying until you bless me. surrender vessels the fire cannot fall on witchcraft the only way fall fall on witchcraft is gonna burn it up yes I hear you Lord it's the fire that's gonna burn up witchcraft it's gonna burn up voodoo the fire it's gonna burn every hex. It's gonna burn every vex. I don't know about y'all, but I can afford not to have that fire. I got witches out there. I got warlocks. I got sorcerers. I gotta burn with the fire. I got 
sorcerers. I got voodoo. I got voodoo out there. I got Jesus. I got a burn with the fire. It's trying to kill me. I got a burn it with the fire. Trying to kill her. I got a burn with the fire. Trying to kill your family. You. 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 To have the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn it, Lord. Burn it. You gotta burn your perversion. You gotta burn your sexual perversion. You gotta burn pedophiles. You gotta burn lesbianism. You gotta burn homosexuality. I need somebody. Somebody. Gotta catch on fire. Somebody. Gotta catch on fire. Somebody. Gotta stop faking it to the music and get to the fire. I need the fire. Burn again. I need the fire to light me again. I need the fire to burn my feet. Y'all can't hear nobody. When the fire burn my feet, I can't stand still. I need the Holy Ghost to burn my hand. When they burn my hand, they gotta go up in the place. Need the fire, fire Lord, fire Lord. I gotta fight for my fire. I gotta fight for my anointing. I gotta fight for my salvation. I gotta fight for my deliverance. I gotta fight for my family. I gotta fight for my children. I can't fight without the fire. I can't fight. Well, I so wish God could do what he want to do. It's too much wet wood in here. The wood too wet. Too wet with sin. Wet with unbelief. Wet with all these doubts and things. Y'all better hear me. Yes, Lord. Well, I heard them say, sometimes you got to fake it until you make it. Well, God. I don't feel no fire. I tell you to run like you're on fire. And after a while, something will get a hold of you. I tell somebody that don't feel nothing. I tell you to run. I bet when you run, that's on fire. Go get on you. Run. 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 Get ready. Get ready. Let it fall. Fall. Lord, I didn't feel nothing. I gotta run again. Lord, I didn't feel the flame. I gotta run again. I gotta walk until I get it. I gotta walk till it fall to the sun. I gotta walk till I get it back. I gotta walk till it fall again. I gotta walk until I speak in tongues one more time. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> My parents wanted to pray. My battle is won in prayer. Ah, Shato. My battle is won in prayer. Yeah. Yeah. It's won in prayer. That's how your body going to get healed. You got to walk in prayer until you got heal you. He died to heal you. But how bad did you want to get to it? How bad did you want the manifestation?
Some of y'all got to stay y'all anointing back up again. You got to pray and warn and pray to God stir you up again. Because some of y'all been dead too long. But it's a perfect time right now. The Lord's setting that fire down. And all you got to do is make an exchange. That's all you got to do. Make an exchange. See, the devil didn't want this, this message. Because I felt the battle in the soul when I started talking. But somebody got a lot of big go back and pray, brother. We, what you know about back one again until God give it back to us. I don't need another prayer session with the pastor. I don't need another counseling session. What I need is a prayer session with the Lord by Himself. I can't get nobody. Me, my Lord, and I back on my face again. Let me go home because I'm done. But somebody better not leave this room without making your mind up. I'm going back to the altar. I'm going back to the carpet. I'm going back to my secret closet. I'm going back to the place where I used to meet God every morning. I can't pray because I don't see no change. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to believe while I'm praying. God is hearing me. While I'm praying, I'm winning. While I'm praying, God's delivering. While I'm praying, God's restoring. Can I get somebody that don't mind giving God one more? One more praise. I'm about to put this mic down. I'm looking for somebody that can muster up another praise. Not your belly. Muster up another praise. Do you feel it? I need somebody. I can't hear you. I can't hear it. A sound. A sound. At your belly. A sound. At your cry. The battle is won through prayer. I'm done. The Lord said, You got to get back on your faces again. Pray until you lift that heaviness off you. Ain't enough of just coming to church getting a spark. I would have a problem if I know I don't feel God like I used to. There's nothing the preacher could do for you. That's between you and God. Woo! God. That sin got to come out your life. Got to surrender that stuff. Because God said I can't burn no strange fire. I can't do it. If it's strange, you got a strange spirit, strange, strange lust, strange passions. God said, I can't burn in that. He can't strong, he can't burn through this strong perversion and I'll pick up in the spirit. I'm not gonna burn until you get rid of it. Oh, it's quiet on me. <laughs> Gotta get that stuff up. Get some help. Because God said that thing is quenching my spirit. It's some stuff quenching God's spirit. That's why they don't feel them no more. Quench means to put the fire out. You don't feel God's fire no more? That means something is quenching you. Something is putting your fire out. It's some strange fire suffocating it. It's suffocating your true fire. You can't feel God, the power of God moving like this? Some quenching. Shando. Problem is, we ain't been warned in prayer. David said, I warned. The battles, he delivered my soul in peace. 
from the battle that was against me. That was. He prayed till it became a was, not a is. <laughs> he prayed till the battle became a was. Past tense. He prayed till it was over. And God said, in this hour, stop looking for a preacher to lay hands on you. All the time. Because that's what he do. He supposed to lay hands on the sick and all that. But God said, this is hour I need you to get before me. Come on now. Sacrifice your stomach. Sacrifice your time with me. And labor in prayer. Oh God, we don't want to do that no more. Ten minutes, that's it.